Hello and welcome! We got another VOD review coming right here. We got the Dallas Fuel taking on the San Francisco Shock. This was for the opening round. What is this? This is... Yeah, this is like the seeding round of the playoffs for the May Melee, the first round. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I'm going to spoil it in just a second. Click out if you don't want to be spoiled right now. Uh, you're about to witness a car crash. Uh, not the one that we would expect. Dallas Fuel win this three over the shock, and it's not particularly close. Like, it really isn't. It's... I don't think I've ever seen a breakdown like this from the shock in the history... Well, since season one. I think they've obviously had bad matches. They've definitely lost matches. But this is, like, a complete failure, in my opinion. I'm sure they're taking it the same way. Bad teamwork, bad co old coordination, bad... Just, honestly, a lot of everything. Uh... Do need to give massive credit. It's not just the shock. The Dallas Fuel have come out with a lack of hit scan and just fucking started punching everyone in the face. Uh, they are playing at a tempo that nobody else is able to keep up with. And they're utilizing some really interesting picks. We're going to see the, a bunch of the uh, Symmetra in the brawl. We're going to see a lot of Sombra. We're get, we just see a lot of different looks. And Shock just didn't have an answer to it. Uh, it's not only them, we, you know, we see it later that you know, Houston also doesn't have an answer to it. So we're going to break it down, look at it a little bit closer and sort of see, see where it all went wrong. So let's have a look. Uh, yo, Restrick with 100 bits. Hey, Cuss, I love your content. Always love you since you were on Dallas. How can you Prime sub? If you connect your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch. So if you go to Twitch Connections, you can connect your Amazon uh, to that. And then you'll get one free sub. If you click on su the subscribe button, it'll come up with use your free subscription. And uh, you'll be able to do that. So if you're on YouTube, you can't do that. You can just hit the subscribe button. But you can do that as well. That also makes me happy. Thanks for the money. <laughs> I did not say thanks for the money. It was, a, it was an accident, Gray. <laughs> So we're going to see the Symmetra uh, going up against the McCree. So that's the major difference. Obviously, Dallas Fuel still don't have a hitscan player. So instead of sort of leaning into it, they are <laughs> playing a lot of this Symmetra to sort of change the tempo of the way the game is playing. You see Shock playing at a very smart. They're just trying to create as much distance as they can, create get the value out of the McCree. Well, it's hitscan, eh? You don't need no hitscan. I'm surprised that Shock isn't running more. Oh. Interesting TP. So now the Shocker in the middle between both of them. But they get the TP. Both teams drop. Now we got a brawl. Lamp a little early. Lamp perfect by Fielder. Trade it, trading main tanks right there. Okay, that was honestly pretty well played by both of those teams. Dallas Fuel get the positioning. Nero went aggressive. Force use block. This is a great co compensation by his team. Like, Nero lives just long enough. I think he's still dead. Yeah, but, like, that was a great play. Violet gets the window down. Him and Striker just murder some people, as they usually do. So, good play by the Shock. You think Fielder being on all six maps? Uh, yes, they helped him play, but absolutely. And it's the harsh reality, and we were saying this coming into, you know, earlier in May Melee. You can't just keep switching your flex supports. Especially if they're playing the exact same thing. Just pick one. And I think Fielder is the better and more consistent one over Repel. And I like that Fuel decided to stick to their guns instead of being like, oh, let's give them both playtime. It's just not a good competitive long-term strategy. And we will talk about that with the Shock at some point as well, right? Of how much value are they really getting out of putting Violet on the McCree? Why is Violet playing McCree instead of, um, you know, where's Glister? Where we, we, we still don't know wh what the answer is of where is Glister. Pretty good shatter by uh, by Super. He should be able to get the kill. Unfortunately, he does end up going to Narnia. So that sort of opens the door for Fearless to get high value, but... Good mail by Nero. Honestly, pretty well played. You, you take those. It's good to... Cuts to talk about Fearless now? Oh, well, there'll be plenty of time to talk about Fearless. Don't worry about that. We don't need to rush into everything. Let's get, th let's get through it. It's just very odd. Uh, I said this uh, a little bit earlier as well, but... I do want to go under the idea of if it generally doesn't make sense, there's generally a reason that we don't under, like, we haven't been told. We don't have the information. 
Why is Glisten not playing? He should be there to play the hit scan, but he's not playing it. It could be a personal thing. It could be a team synergy thing. It could be a, any of these different things. It's just weird that we haven't heard any news about why he hasn't played. The only time we've seen him play was on that Tracer, on that one Dorado against Houston. And I think we can all agree that was, we never want to see that ever again. But why is he not in to play the hit scan? Why are we taking Violet off of the flex support to play the McCree? It doesn't make any sense. So I'm airing on the side of, we just don't have all the information rather than just like getting my pitchfork out about like play gl glister you cowards um so that's sort of where i'm at oh yeah glister played a little bit of widow as well yeah all right good wall hunter's just gonna die for free wow it's not the worst thing in the world the mailed is the worst thing in the world though why is it thrown here? Doha? It feels like he just like, he froze, they, they got the mech and then he's like, just throw the ult, but there's no one here. Oh, that's a good shatter. Oh, I remember seeing this up. This is so sad. So this is actually really well played by the Dallas Fuel. They freeze super, they drop the, they drop the shatter. FD got was probably out of position. Like, when he dropped that beat, but it is just unfortunate. But I'm sure you are pissed if you're FD God. That would have been a great beat. It really would have been a good beat, but gets shouted out of it. Avoiding the Diva Eat? Yeah, but to avoid the Diva Eat, right? We're going back to the Doha point. If you're going to avoid the Diva Eat, that's great. And you need a freeze, you need to de-mech the Diva, all that kind of stuff. But it doesn't mean you just fucking throw it. Like, as soon as he got that mech, he should have thrown it at the Rhine, right? By throwing it at the feet of the Diva, the best thing he's going to get from that one was kill the Baby Diva. So... Needed to, I, it just needed to be in a better spot once they demacked it. This is the last VOD review for the day. I'm probably going to do a Chengdu VOD review at some point as well. After this. No promises. I Actually, this match should take not very long. <laughs> Pepe love. <laughs> so, yeah, probably we'll do another review. Alright, so we got, uh, Choi goes first. It's kind of like the same strategy we saw from the Div Dallas Fuel. You send out the Diva if they have Diva Bomb, because even if they lose mech, they just drop Diva Bomb, and then you still get value from that. They need to kill this turret. Alright, there it goes. Dallas is doing a pretty good job of, like, stabilizing in this fight. I would really like to see... Yeah, I was gonna say, I would actually really like to see them just drop the beat and put a nail in the coffin of this fight, because it, the longer that fight went, there were, the more chances there were that Shock was gonna get a random pick with the window and stuff like that, right? So, I, as much as it kind of feels like it wasn't necessary by Jexay, I think it was still the right play. Simwall is the most underrated ult in the game? Absolutely. Simwall is just so oppressive to play against, and as you guys said, that was just a great Simwall. You could always bounce back and forth between it to the point where the opposition team couldn't do a lot. Oh, okay. Super going for the super going for the wild strategy of just going for the shatter off the bat. Does not pay off. Striker also high noon, so they don't get value out of either ult. Actually, striker's still holding it. Never mind. Oh, that's a great mail by Nero though. That cro that crossed them so much positioning. As much as it didn't get any kills, it cost them so much positioning. But Sparkle gets violet through the window with a right click, it looks like. They run him down. Oh, super be fucking though. Rasteric, thank you very much for the prime sub. Much love. I appreciate that. Thank you for the prime sub. I explain the prime and then I get your sub. I appreciate that. I hope it wasn't too hard. Alright, so now they're both in the fight. They both decide to disengage. Dallas Fuel still has the point. Let's see how this goes. Another great wall. Like, that is so hard to deal with if you're the shock, right? Just a wall literally in the middle. Like, all of a sudden, Striker... Striker has to drop at this point, right? He can't play up here. Striker literally doesn't want to drop to the point that he's actually doing nothing. Oh, Sparkle. How does Sparkle die to that? Oh, the wall disappeared. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> He's like, which side of the wall? Oh, it's on the left side? Oh, it's fine. I'll just, I'll just go on the left side. Oh, shit. 
<laughs> if he had actually walked forward, he would have made it to the lamp, but... That is unfortunate timing on the wall disappearing. Okay, double windows. Violet goes down again. And that's the cap. Damn. Shock just couldn't get in the fight. Honestly, I think Shock played pretty well there, but I think Dallas played even better. And it's the, the same point. I think the tempo was really good. And just the sheer amount of value they're getting out of the Symmetra Walls. Like, that was two team fights that I think they literally won because of Symmetra Walls. It's just so oppressive, especially on these Koth points. I'm curious to see if we're going to see more Symmetra from other teams other than Dallas in the... Uh, in the matchups. Do you think the bomb was timed with the wall ending like Kreez was doing? No. No, there's no way that was timed. Uh, Choi literally dropped his uh, Diva Bomb when he lost his mech. But also, I if you ask me what the timing of, of how long the Symmetra Wall was, I wouldn't be able to time it. It's not like a high noon where like, everyone has like a mental clock, right? When a high noon goes down, how long it's going to last for and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't think many people would have that with a Symmetra Wall. It's too long. I think Symmetra Wall's 15 seconds? 20 seconds? So I, I very much doubt that people are timing that out. Counter 6? Yeah, exactly right. Oh, okay, you want to see some Fearless gameplay? Let's talk about the man of the hour. Because if you didn't watch... If you haven't watched our so far this... Fearless be fucking is more of the story. Wobble, wobble, I'm not even going to even fucking. prime it with anything else. Phyllis do be fucking. He is definitely, by far, right now, the MVP of the Overwatch League. He has just been so good. Not only on the Reinhardt, but the Winston. His Winston has been just literally on another level. Like, I think if you saw the stat uh, statistics, he's just, he's just built differently right now. So, we're going to see that. And I think a lot of the Dallas Fuel success we're seeing right now, especially in the, in the uh, Winston Anna style of playing, is, is on the back of Fearless. So, Pink, thank you very much for the Prime sub as well. Say it louder for the people in the back. Yeah. His understanding of his limitations is just second to none. There does need to be a ton of credit given to the rest of his team, though. I think Fielder has done a phenomenal job of keeping him alive. Han been protecting him as well. Look at that. Just absolute murder people. 70% all charge. I, I was very confused why the San Francisco Shock played Brawl on this map. I, I was... I don't really understand it. Playing Brawl forces them to come into this room, right? They can't play over here while playing Brawl. Otherwise, they just sort of split up a lot. So I, I don't really understand it. I feel like they're walking into a death trap when they play up against this fuel composition. And I don't think we've seen many teams try and play the Brawl here. Everyone has either played the Winston comp or they've played the Wrecking Ball comp with like an Ash and stuff like that, right? Doha Pov, you want to see some Doha? Let's go. Doha's improvement has not been spoken about. I don't think Doha has improved. I think his team just doesn't suck anymore. Which is just the brutal reality is that Doha has always been very solid. There's a lot of great players on average teams that just don't get the recognition they deserve because it's hard to pop off on a bad team. Toxic? Yay, yeah, sometimes you just gotta say it how it is. Oh, this is a good thing. It's a good... Oh! Yes! Good old DPS Reinhardt mechanics coming in clutch. Oh, look at that. That was quick. Oh, another one. Oh, wow. That would have been sick if he hit Violet. If he had hit Violet, he would have come out of that, been able to sticky bomb Violet, and Violet would have died. Doha MTD. <laughs> Damn, I can't believe Super got MTD'd by, uh, by Doha. Who would have thought? Good pulse bomb. I don't like the beat. I thought he might have beat it because of the pulse bomb, but I don't think he. I think he saw it didn't go down. I think he just saw them taking a ton of damage. Also, I don't like to nitpick, but... Oh, 
he beat like he beats under the under thing of like they're taking too much damage, but he's also just amping heals. He's amping speed, so he's they're not even utilizing the speed. I don't know. I don't know. I think FD got. I feel like FD got playing nervous or something like that, right? With his beats, his beats haven't really been as good throughout this uh, season. And that's why we praise Moth, right? So he's he's just very flawless. FD God's had some big moments, but he's also had had some rough ones. Um, great mail by Nero. Nero's mails have been very good so far. Uh, it does go down though. Are they gonna win this? No, they're not gonna get this. And that costs them a lot. And like, I don't like the Lucio Moira. Like, I, I, I think I would rather just see them switch comps. Yeah, here you go. I would rather just see them hard switch here. But like, at this point, if you're switching at this point, you're, you're kind of in trouble. What do you think if Dallas picked up DM? Yeah, I think I think any hit scan, any like veteran hit scan would be good. You could even go for some up and coming hit scan. There's a lot of great options. You know, people are saying Glister, like Glister's not gonna play. Oh, you're a bit oh yeah, he did. Dallas the Glister is a rumor, yeah, and that's it's the rumor that here. Like, I don't even know if there's any legs. I think it's just like people like I I don't know where the rumor's coming from. But it's like, my question becomes why then, right? Why is Glister not playing for the shock? Is he not good enough? If he's not good enough, then do you really want him if you're on the uh, if you're on Dallas? But it's also just like, shock aren't using hit scan Glister. Dallas need a hit scan. Like that could literally be the rumor of just like people making assumptions. Like there's probably no basis behind the rumor of just like people putting two things together. Guangbung is r rumored to be the most likely hit scan, but then, but why? Like, why Guangbung as well? Like, MYXL need Guangbung as a hit scan player. Like, they they they're not playing him, but that doesn't change the fact that he should play. Like, they're playing Flora, so maybe they don't need him. Like, they have Flora, Feather, Ivy. If they want to play Flora on the hit scan, then maybe MYXL would be willing to part ways. But then it's like, well, why isn't Guangbung playing? He's supposed to be a god. Also, he's in Korea. I think the biggest issue that Dallas are having is no matter which option they choose, they're going to have to go through a visa process. Ready for battle. This is the origin of the rumor. All right, let's, let's have a look at this right now because I think this is pretty related. Someone on Reddit that leaked Fury to Washington along with other signings thinks Glister isn't playing because he's Fuel's new hit scan. Please be true. There is a lot of assumptions going on in this... In this... <laughs> This person is relaying someone from Reddit's signings who talked about Fury to Washington that also could have been an assumption thinks that Glister isn't playing because he's in Fuel's process. Like, why wouldn't Glister be able to play if he's on Fuel? That doesn't even make sense. If he's still signed at the San Francisco Shock, he's able to play. Now Reddit's like, you can't take this as a source. There's literally, like, even contractually, it's not like, Gl if Glister was going to the fuel, they would have announced it by now. And Glister would probably still be able to play. Like, as soon as the contracts get finished, trust me, the announcement's coming. Reddit is insane. I, I, as I said, Interesting story of having, yeah, it would be cool if Glister went to Dallas. I think that'd be a really interesting thing, especially seeing as it feels like he's being underutilized on the shock. But I don't think there's any legs to the rumor. It, I don't think there is. And until someone gives me something more concrete, I think that's... I think that's fair. Dude, my man actually admitted to being a Redditor when there are people around. <laughs> I'm shook. What's happening with to you? Or is it supposed to be what's happening with me? Hello. 
How do leaks even happen? It's usually uh, contractual. Someone knows something in the pipeline who then tells somebody else who then tells Halo or something like that. My, uh, my guess is Halo has a lot of little eyes. He has people that are generally in the pipeline of the process or like on teams or something like that. And he has little birds that tell him when whispers are happening. It's generally how you do it. It's literally just sources. Like they just know people who end up knowing privy to information. Or you can just be Michael who <laughs> had an official Overwatch League document that he wasn't supposed to have and then just claimed he had sources when really he was just reading off a document that was consistently being updated. You know, all those kind of things. That was such a, sm a feed by Smurf. Also, players, yeah. It's, it, honestly, the biggest leaks are players tell somebody who tells somebody who tells somebody, and that becomes a source. That was such a feed by Smurf. That was like a massive overcommitment against the Sombra Reaper. Wobble, wobble, motherfucker. Good luck, Kyle. Thank you for the Prime Gaming sub. This is a good disengage by Shock. Like, they should be able to recover from this. So, I, I haven't talked about it so far, but we do have the Violet DPS, Twilight coming in as the Anna. They do, we do need to talk about uh, Twilight. Twilight's Anna is fucking sick. It really is. Like, his nades, his sleeps, they're all very good. He can easily play on the Shock as the flexi support. So, if that's the reason they're doing it, uh, I, I'm all for it. But Violet McCree, I just... I, we're, it's starting to open up the question, raise the question of, is this it? Is this really the solution when you have people like Glista uh, on your bench? Obviously, Twi Violet's very uh, mechanically skilled. Uh, but... Do you really want to put him on hit scan? You're sort of splitting his time from playing flex support. You're taking time away from the actual players who could play the hit scan role from getting experience, getting scrim time, getting all that kind of stuff. And then you, we also saw a bunch of back and forth between who's playing on Smurf and Super. Um, I just think it's because there's so much versatility that we, like, in the meta. So I actually like Smurf being in this map, uh, instead of Super, but I don't know. I think there's just too much movement for my liking. I think everyone can agree. I've always, like, I talked about this, and even before the Shrock started losing, I raised my concerns with this strategy being done, because, as I said, it's fine until it isn't. And then as soon as it isn't, isn't fine anymore, it's like, well, why did we do this? Like, why did we go down this line in the long term? It didn't work. And it kind of feels like, yeah, it feels like the Super on Genji, right? Where it's a short-term fix where maybe Super could play equally as well on Genji as the DPS players that are required to play it because Super just is very good at Genji. But then you run into the issue of why didn't we just put more resources into getting our DPS players that are supposed to play it up to scratch, up to par, to where they need to be instead of putting time into other people of other roles in that role. Imagine if you are Glister, right? Imagine if you are Glister, you come in and you sign with the San Francisco Shock as a hitscan player, and then instead of them playing you in these in these match in these matches in these scrims, you get benched by a support player who is also on your roster. I like that's gotta hurt like a little bit, right? That's gotta hurt. And then the only time he gets put in is to play Tracer? Like, I don't know. Like, obviously we don't understand the inner workings of what's going on behind the San Francisco Shock. They might be deeper than the surface level that I'm scratching at. But it just, it just feels weird. And I'm curious to see what's going to happen for the Shock in the future because it's been a failure for the Shock. This, this whole May melee of, you know, losing to the Houston Outlaws, not making it, not even making it to the second round of the play-ins for the playoffs it it's it's gotta hurt so i'm curious to see if there's gonna be big changes even tayo should be playing more i don't really know where tayo fits in i i, I don't really know what his play or pull is right custer supposedly violet has a hundred percent map involvement clause in his contract did you hear that from the guy who who rumored fury to the washington justice as well like i would i don't think things like that exist <laughs> It's, I don't think any team would ever allow a player to sign 100% map in, in clause. And I, if that was a joke, I, it went over me. But people, it's the thing is, people believe that shit. That's how rumors start, right? Someone in Custer's stream said this, when really it was a joke that you didn't put Kappa at the end of. And then Reddit runs with it. 
They're like, I can't believe Violet is setting fire to the San Francisco shock. It's like, oh my god, I can't believe Violet's going to the Washington Justice. Like, it just creates this, like, snowball effect of people saying things, right? Again, have one right? No. As I said, I don't think anyone has ever... No one has ever had that in the contract. If it does exist and the rumors are fu that's fine. I, as a player, as someone who w worked on the inner workings, I worked at two different teams. I know a lot of people's contracts. I have never heard of anybody who has a play contract thing. I know people that have uh, contracts where they get more money for the maps that they, the number of maps that they play. Like they have a low contract, but the more maps that they play, they get a high. They get more money. I've had that, but I've never heard someone who has to be played or something like that. That was a good engage. I do want to also hit this. This was such a smart play, in my opinion, by the, uh, by the Dallas Fuel. We highlighted in the pre-show coming into this match, if, if there's going to be a massive difference between these two teams, I think it's going to be between Striker and Sparkle playing this Tracer. And then Dallas are like, you can't lose if you don't play. And they come out with a rush comp with the Lucio and Moira playing a Reaper. They don't have to mirror the Tracer anymore. They're playing a... Tracer is not that effective against this composition. So they're just not playing against it. So they're finding... As much as I think the shot composition is better... I think the fuel can play to their strengths and play it better and then get the wins on that. So is it was very well played by the Dallas Fuel in the way that they adjusted their compositions to be effective against what the San Francisco Shock were gonna what their win conditions essentially were. Objective lost. New defense Objective as fan tilting as it sounds, Shocker washed up. I would even go to <laughs> I would even go as far to say they were never good. Ah, that's bait. That's fucking bait right there. Don't listen to him, chat. If you're on YouTube and you're rage typing in the replies right now, he's fucking trolling you. <laughs> oh my god. That's a good sleep. It's actually kind of baffling that it did- I thought this EMP was going to hit more people when I was watching it as well. But it only- Is this- oh, this is the visual bug as well. I- maybe I should report this, but this is the set. I remember seeing this live and seeing that they only EMP striker. But the way it seems to be that if someone is pass nanoed and they get the hacked, pass. it doesn't show on the, uh- Hear me out, bench FD and put Twilight and Vile 2T. Violet 2T? Uh, no. Because you need a Lucio player. Uh, FD, like, I don't think FD God's Brig is the problem either. Like, it's, it's, FD God is not the problem right now. Uh, but yeah, there's, there seems to be a visual bug. This is also hit, uh, Smurf as well. He's just nanoed. If you're nanoed, it doesn't show, seem to show the hack bug. Uh, the hack animation, so. This is just a good grab, good nano. Well played by the, uh, by the shock. I don't think they over altered, right? Like they, th I think they threw a pulse bomb as well. I actually think someone, I actually think I remember this got highlighted. Striker loses his pulse bomb. Yeah, look at this. Look at how good this pulse bomb would have been. But because of the EMP and the timing of when the EMP hits, it actually doesn't go out. It would have actually killed nine people. That pulse bomb actually would have killed so many people, but the EMP hit at the perfect time. And we all know the timing of losing a pulse bomb is minuscule. It really is. It, there's only a few frames in which you can lose a pulse bomb to a hack or like a bash or something like that. So he would have actually killed nine. Strike a wash. <laughs> Great, I swear to God, you're gonna kill people. <laughs> Strike a B tier, yeah. After that, I'm I'm dropping him down to A tier from on my power rankings for Tracer. Dalton Graham, that's true. I would chat. I swear to God, I will turn you guys off. I will turn this car around right now and turn chat off. <laughs> All right, here we go. Fearless Primal Rage, baby. 
100% of the time, it gets value every time. Oh god, help Doha. No, oh, did he actually save him? No, he didn't. Alright, he didn't- the, I, of course, the one time I'm like, Felix gets value out of his primal every time, he fucking botches it. In his defense, Doha botched it first, so I, yeah, it's not really Felix's fault. I- I don't know if I agree... And here- here is the issue as well that we run into with the shock, right? Is Violet- all of a sudden, McCree is not very good against Rush because it, it just plays at such a tempo that you just get mitigated. So he plays the Echo and now it's like, well, is Violet's Echo as good as it needs to be, right? I think it actually is pretty good from what I saw, but it opens that can of worms, right? Of like, all of a sudden, Violet needs to not only be good at clicking on people as he needs to be good enough at Echo to play the mechanics and stuff like that. I do remember it being quite good, but like, the, the point still stands. God damn it, Moira Orbs. This is why we shouldn't all agree to not play Moira because of this bug. Okay? God damn it, Dallas, we talked about this. No one wants to play Moira. Wasn't a carry? Yeah, like it wasn't exceptional, but it wasn't the problem as well, right? I actually think, I actually think Shock played pretty well on this defense here. Uh, I think the Dallas fuel strategy, it doesn't work anywhere near as well. Like, you saw how good the rush was with uh, Dallas fuel when you can sort of pivot around shock and push them into a corner and then engage and they have point presence. That doesn't really work on this map. I don't really like the rush anywhere near as much on this map because, like, they have to just engage from the front and rush from the front and just look how protected the shock can play. Like, they don't feel like they have their back against the corner and their front line can just play around the point. So, I don't really love the comp by the Dallas fuel here. Uh... I don't remember this happening. That was so unfortunate. How does he hit Jexay with that? It's actually five head? All right, let's see what he does. Amps the heals, good thinking. Just amp heals so he gets the beat. Oh, he's gonna get beat anyway. Yo! Value! Forces the EMP. It was kind of a bait, but it forces the EMP. Yo, everyone should just turn into Lucio's more often. That's what I just learned from that. Dallas Fuel throw the Diva Bomb to try and slow this down. I don't... Yeah. The EMP Diva Bomb kind of good. They, it would have been better if they overlapped each other. Also, look at this. Look at... Look at... Look at... I remember seeing this in real time. Look at... Look at Violet's health during this. He heals him like six times, and Violet just like is should have died like five seconds earlier, but he just lives for so long. Phyllis. Alright, Phyllis Primal Rage, here we go. And then he gets countered by Smurf Primal Rage. Monkey on monkey action, and he still gets double value from it. He's so good. Alright, Coalescence, uh, I don't agree with that one from Fildor, I think Fildor would want that one back if he could. FD God rallies, almost dies. Just lives to tell the tale. Good stall by the shock, alright, like, that's just great, that's just great mechanics right there, of like, everyone knew their, their role, like, let's go back. This is on Fildor, expecting them to just like, int in, like most people do. Uh, but like, the shock are like, okay, give ticks, give ticks, just reset. FD got even early rallies. Almost kills FD Gob with this pulse bomb as well. Um, but they like they know, right? Like FD God takes a bit of aggro, they're giving a couple of ticks, and then FD God touches a little bit, but they're just waiting to get enough payers back that they can actually dive. You see Smurf goes, gets the kill, and that's pretty much it on that. And that that's just capitalizing on a great mistake by uh Fielder. Feels kinda cracked, yeah, dude. Phyllis is kinda cracked and jacked, let's be honest. Ooh.
Echo, Echo copying a supporter is basically like pseudo goats. It's just not very good. Like Lucio very rarely gets the value because it can actually be hard to charge up a, a beat sometimes. Like if, because you can't always just go aggressive. Like the, pe the reason people like doing monkey is because it's almost impossible to not get a primal once you get the monkey copy. While at Lucio, it's easy to just get kicked out of the copy or just not be able to go aggressive or not get value out of your amp. Oh no, we haven't got to, we haven't gotten to the the shock attack where it all falls apart. So, Choi grabs. It's pretty good. It's on the tanks, but the EMP from Doha hits a few, and they beat to to negate it, which is very well played. Smurf gets punished for that. Hanbin eats the striker pulse bomb because he's just so good and handsome. It's a good copy by Violet. Questionable jump. Did he just overshoot that? Oh no, yeah. He he needed to get primal, I think, fast. And Chucker just do anything. I, and as I said, I just think this is a fuel composition problem. Like, I just don't think they ever... They just don't have enough damage to clean everything up, right? They can't kill everything that the Shock have fast enough. So unless they get, like, a six-man EMP, I just don't think they can... They can reliably get enough kills. Yo, thanks, Leroy. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Violet found a way. Yeah, dude, you talk shit about Violet, he'll find a way to county. Alright, Felix goes in. Where are their supports? There's no way Choi dies here, right? Okay, good save by FD got at the last second. Holy shit, he had me worried. He's just like looking at the ceiling. I'm like, bro, you're, <laughs> you're Zaya. <laughs> EMP's good, but it's too late, I think. Yeah, and Shock, Shock are going to hold that. They, as I said, I think the fuel... It's like the weakness, right, of not having hits again. Sometimes they're forced to play things. I think they could have played some other stuff. Yeah, like, I think I would have preferred to see, like, Doha Echo Sparkle Tracer. I think that would have been better. Like, the comp that they're playing now, but with the Lucio and Moira, like... I don't think they needed the Sombra. The Sombra... Did the Sombra ever really get good value? I don't think so, right? Like, against the comp that the Shock are playing, I don't think they needed to force it. Alright, let's see how the Shock do this. Let's watch some Striker. God, this fucking attack, yeah, um, it's, it's a doozy. Sparkle almost got the better of Striker there. So Violet, wait, how does Violet end up in that room? What just happened? How did- Sorry, one second. I'm going back. I- I actually- You know what? I'm gonna change. Uh... Video? Where's this- Where's the settings? How do I- How do I change the settings again? Is it advanced? Oh, this thing, right? Options. Uh, I want to make this 10 seconds. I feel like 5 seconds is just always too short. How does Violet end up in this room? Oh! No! 
No! Oh! Ah, shit. He hit the hard shot and missed the easy shot. Dude, look at how good that movement is. It was such a good play as well. Dude, Strike is actually just fucking though. Glissa would have killed Brick. Hey, let's not open that can of worms, you know? Just fan the hammer. He could have done anything, right? He literally just had to body shot. He just whipped the body shot as well. Alright, so Dallas coming in late. Like, super late. To try and get the contest. So, the Shock should win this. They don't need to win it early, though. Twilight's about to get Nano. So, Fearless goes in. Fearless should get a lot of kills here, right? Actually, he doesn't have Nano. Yeah, I think Phyllis felt like he had to go. And then, yeah, it's just too good from Smurf. With the Nano. Custer would have hit that shot. Yeah, I had my three drink. If I had three drinks in me, I'd hit it. Watch Violet there. Oh, yeah, no, I actually remember that. Yeah, Violet just, like, dinks a few people. It's clean up, though, you know? Like, I, as I said, no, I don't think anyone's doubting that Violet's not a good hit scan. I think Violet's a, a very good hit scan. I think he could definitely do it. It just feels weird when they're changing roles for it. Three drink Custer is cracked. Exactly. How does Shock beef this map? Oh, you're about to see. So, Striker just murders Str uh, Sparkle here. I don't, how does he even kill him? Oh! So good. So Smurf goes in and gets slapped. Oh, and then they nano a Winston in. With another Winston. Oh, God. FD God rallies. I, I actually don't mind the rally. It just... They kind of... It just kind of doesn't work for him. They got a tick and a half of that, actually, which is pretty good. How do they get so many ticks, actually? Does no, just no one want to touch the point? I think Hanbin needs to touch here. I think Hanbin should have dropped. This feels greedy not to drop here. I don't think there's a reason. He has a Brig to protect him. I think you dropped there, right? Eh... Uh... Yeah. I don't know if I I don't know if I like giving them that tick there, but it's fine. High noon? I don't think that high, that high noon wasn't looking at the point, was it? Oh, it was. I would have fucking died, dude. <laughs> I would have died. I would have died to this high noon. A hundred percent. Yeah, that would have killed me. <laughs> Makes more sense. Good, good call, Hanbin. Good call. <laughs> Sweet. High noon eight mines though. I do. I I died all alt. Alright, what do we got, Smurf? Oh shit, fell full short. Alright, so Choi throws the grab. And so does Hanbin. I actually kind of like that grab by Choi. Uh, shit. Alright, well, they get fucked though. So, I actually don't mind the grab by Choi. Like, I think it was good, but... I don't think the... Smurf wasn't ready for it, right? Like, if, if Smurf was able to follow it, then it would have been good. Dude, Smurf gets slept again by Fielder. Smurf's just on... F just getting slept on cooldown. <gasps> no! And he here's where it all starts going wrong. And I think for a lot of people, here's where, like, mistakes start coming through. And this was such a weird map for the Shock. I don't think these guys make these mistakes. Like, why are you... 
if you lose your Zaya, there is no reason, I think, to primal, right? So you're in this situation. They've dealt they've lost their Zaya and their Brig in the grab. You've thrown the grab. You are two down. And then Smurf Primals? Like, you know, it's two CP. It's not like even it's not like he's he's on the defense and he needs to hold it. Like and then Violet also uses High Noon in a situation where no one else can really follow. He botches the he botches he botches the uh, primal. He gets fearless, but like, it's two CP. They're gonna respawn first. Then they, you drop the nano onto Violet because Sparkle's on top of him, right? So then we go here. They just electric cowboy to try and also keep salvaging this, and then he just gets pulse bombed and dies. It's like, what, they just use Nano Primal High Noon in a fight where they lost their Zyre and Brig at the start of the- Like, the Zyre and the Brig are just getting back. They used those three ults when they were already that many players down on 2CP. They, they know better. Like, they're the shock. And that's why it's so uncharacteristic to see that from them. Like, they're never going to win these fights. Why are they using ults? And it- like, you just look at it, that this looks like desperation when they're using these ults. Everyone's just trying to win the game on their own. Like, the Smurf's trying to win the game on his own. Choi's throwing a grab, which doesn't have follow-up by Smurf. He's trying to win the game on his own. Violet High Noon's main trying to turn the fight as well, and then Twilight's, like, trying to compensate for that as well by also throwing an ult. Kind of when it rains, it pours for them, and we... If you go back and look at vo Shock VODs, you won't see that many, uh, many times. Who's the leader in this team? Well, the thing is, you need to remember is they've lost so many players. The, the players that they usually have have changed, right? Like, Super's not in this primary lineup, but Super doesn't always in. Twilight is all, all of a sudden in the flex support, and Violet's in on the DPS, right? There's a lot of different roles being moved around, a lot of different, different people focusing on other things, calling other things, than they used to, and it creates these kind of things. Violet calls a fair few maps, and here's the thing. If you're a caller as a flex support, I, I bet you that Violet is not calling as much when he is a DPS because when you change role, I'm sure anyone who's played, you know, when I'm a support player, I can call a lot. As soon as I get on McCree, the only thing I can think about is playing McCree. Like, it's the only thing I can focus on. When you're not as comfortable on something, you can't do other tasks anywhere near as well. So it wouldn't be surprised if calls are going through the cracks and stuff like that. Oh, I remember this. This was this was this was a doozy. Calling on DPS, calling on DPS is quite hard. Yes. <laughs> this was uh, this was when we were like, how good is Dollars McCree? We they did ask him the question of like, did you mean to? And I think he literally just used McCree uh, like the. Duplicate to make sure he didn't die, which is fine. But yeah, it was... <laughs> Answer, eh, yeah. Yes, I think Super does a lot of calling for the for the shock when he is in. So Smurf on the point again. Dude, the dive by Doha, like, Doha, Sparkle, and Fearless is just so good. Like, they always kill, they're just, every single time a backliner dies. Like, every time Shock tries to walk forward, they're giving, they, look at how much space they're giving Smurf. Like, they don't even give a shit about Smurf. Smurf just jumps onto the point, they're like, oh yeah, man, whatever. And then Sparkle, Doha, and um, Fearless just go in. Just put on so much pressure. Just always get one. Toy's dead. Everyone's one health. Violet high noons. 
up there. He gets, he gets, he gets Doha, which was unexpected, but there it is. I think as soon as Fearless Primal's here, I think you just accept the fight is over. Like, the fight is over. They fuck up the, they wake him up. They fuck that up. They could have killed him. As soon as he primals here and you guys gain displaced, it, this is over, right? Like, it, you have to accept that this is over. You're being overrun. You're not gonna, like, even if you win this fight, it, it's not gonna be enough, right? And then they nano the brig? Like, how is nanoing the brig ever a winning solution? Like, yo, you got Smurf right here. Like, maybe if they nanoed Smurf. Okay, and then FD God compensates again by using Rally. So now they all of a sudden have an indestructible brick. Like, and it's like, it's not like Nano Rally Brick isn't a bad thing. We saw Raid Boss Jake run onto the point against the Dallas Fuel. And it's good if you're in defense and it is your last ditch effort and you need to keep someone alive. But if you are the Dallas Fuel like they are here, they're just like, oh, fuck it. Okay, we'll run. Everyone just ignores FD God, gives them the tape thing and disengage. Like, look at the peace, presence of mind from the Fuel compared to what the Shock just did. Shock just used two of their most important ultimates to take this fight and this point, and just threw them away in a fight that they could have easily just reset. FD God was low, it doesn't matter, don't win the fight. Like, your fi the fight's already over. If FD God dies by natural causes of just like that, then you, you let that happen. And then Harmon just comes in with the grab and just all of a sudden, like, is was that fight worth postponing? It just isn't. And it's just so weird and uncharacteristic from every single one of these players. And now it's like they don't have the ultimates. Like, da every ultimate that Dallas throws at them, they just have... Fuel has a solution, right? And now they're still committing ultimates. Like, so... Hanbin grabs and kills your brig, right? And then all of a sudden, they they think this is go time. They get a kill on Doha. So then Smurf primals into the back line. So Fuel's just like, okay, we'll rally if you're going to primal. And then once again, Choi decides that, oh shit, this is the fight that we gotta win. His whole team is, look at how far away his team is. Strike is in fucking Narnia with a Pulse Bomb. They have grabbed Pulse Bomb online, but Strike is all the way over here, cannot follow up at all. Nobody can help this grab. There's a rally going, so Hanbin just can't die. They just nano Hanbin because fuck it, if they're throwing ults, we can just throw ults to make sure we don't lose this fight. It's... All of a sudden, Shock still don't have any ultimates. They haven't had a good fight in two to three minutes. They haven't had a good fight in two to three minutes, but they just keep using their ultimates. And the thing is, Dallas are inting in. They're doing the 2CP thing of they're going more aggressive and getting kills and trading one for one because they can. They're on the defense. But then Shock is losing these one for ones as well, but then thinking they also want to commit. It was weird. It's just so weird. And I don't know why this is happening. I, I honestly think it might be on Twilight a little bit. Twilight keeps nanoing people. And I think people are seeing these nanos and then thinking that they need to commit. But I also think it's a little bit on Smurf because Smurf is primaling when it really, even if he gets best case scenario, like one or two picks, he's already lost one. So I think Twilight and Smurf maybe are the catalyst of this. And Choi and FD got are just trying to compensate. I don't know what it is. Yeah, and it's just... It's so weird. Depends who is calling. Well, see, the thing is, it's not one person calling alts, right? It's not, it's never, that's not how Overwatch is played. Overwatch isn't played with one person being the rule of thumb. Like, like, excuse this. If F, if Foot Moth was in instead of FD God, I don't think, like, let's just say, we're, we're, nothing against FD God, but let's say we put Moth in instead of FD God. I don't think Moth makes the mistake of rallying when he uh, when fd god did when he got nanoed but i also don't think moth is going to stop smurf and twilight from nanoing and primaling right so it's like it's not one person's fault that something like this is happening it is it is individual mistakes across the board and it just doesn't feel like they're having that classic like san francisco shock like calm down reset let's go back what are our win conditions Alright, so, <laughs> once again, we have nanoed, we, have they nanoed Smurf this round? I don't think they've nanoed Smurf this whole round. And Smurf just keeps jumping in the start, at the start of the fight, at this back line. Like, Fielder should theoretically die. Great D, great boot by, uh, Jexe. But once again, we're getting an electric cowboy. Violet gets low, he high noons, they nano. 
But FD guy, God just dies because Nano Winston's really good. They got the copy Winston as well. They're just double Winston running at the team. And Fuel just have a lit litany of ults. Violet does murder a couple of people, actually. Let's look at that. But it's just not enough. I think they nanoed Smurf on the first point. Oh yeah, they did nano. Yeah, you remember the first point when they nanoed Smurf and they won the fight? That was interesting. I don't know. As I said, I don't. I don't know what happened here. I. This. If you're, I'm sure if you're the shock and you're the coaching staff, you're very upset about what happened in that map. But it, like, you just you just look it back and you. If you change this, if you change the name of the San Francisco Shock, and I said guess this team. You guys wouldn't... I don't think you would ever predict the San Francisco shock. I think you would assume you're looking at a bottom... Like, a bottom tier team. Like, yeah, I would have thought we were watching the Vancouver Titans. And they're, they're just, like, nanoing Linksa. They're just abandoning the supports? Yeah, like... I think Twilight missed it. Maybe it was missed. Like, if it was missed, then, like, I, I'm not seeing that properly. But, yeah. I think it's generally pretty hard to hit your McCree instead of your Winston. Uh, what am I looking for? Did Striker do anything wrong? Striker was okay. I, I didn't see Striker make too many mistakes. I think there was a pretty big disconnect. Like, they never got that growl pulse bomb. I didn't really notice Striker a lot, but he's sort of playing in the... In the supposed to be going in the back line with Smurf. So... You should take FD spot. Hey, if you saw FD make a bunch of mistakes, wait until you see me jump in there. Trust me, I am I'm a mega washed now. I I'm at the point now where I just talk talk about everyone else making mistakes, but I you know don't throw me in there. Leave it. It's not FD God. Like it is not just FD God, and I think that's the most important thing that we need to look at with this like shock mistakes. Like FD God made some mistakes. You know, same thing with Nero. Like, the, I feel like it's so easy for people to come in and just blame Nero and FD God. Be like, these are the people that weren't around for our true time. Get them. And I think it's so easy to say that, but it's not. It isn't their fault. It is not just their fault. Troy Hyoben made mistakes. Smurf made mistakes. Violet made mistakes. Twilight made mistakes. Striker made mistakes. Everybody made mistakes. Is not just the new players. FD God, like the. His rally, like, was because he got nanoed, and he just thinks, oh shit, okay, we're trying to win this fight and stuff like that. It was not just his fault. It's team effort feed, yeah. I think there's there's a lot of people with, looking for, a, for somebody to blame, and I don't think you can isolate one thing. Alright, let's go on to it. We're going on to uh, Eichenwalder. Holy! Um, we're going to see Brawl v Brawl. We're going to see the Dallas once again picking it up with the Symmetra. Like, look at how they... This is something that Fuel did so well with the Symmetra. They're just changing the dynamic of the way the fight is being fought, right? By TPing up here, all of a sudden they don't, there's no chokes. Chokes don't exist anymore. And all of a sudden, the shock have to instantly react on where they're supposed to be, right? So it's like all of a sudden the back line is now the front line. So that's what happened to Striker, right? So Striker ends up being like, oh shit. Striker thinks they're disengaging this way. The rest of the shock think they're disengaging this way. So like there's a disconnect. Striker all, all of a sudden realizes he's not behind the shield. Boom, goes down. That is great play by the fuel. Who the hell is practicing? Yeah, and I think yeah, like this is this is not unforced errors as well as you guys are talking about. This isn't like oh, uh, striker should know better. This is. You have to now adapt on the fly. How many times do you think the Shock has played against somebody in this meta where all of a sudden they play May Symmetra and they TP to behind you on Eichenwald? This is the cool thing about how the Fuel played with the Symmetra is they just upped the tempo. They went, they upped the tempo and did something that people haven't, 
played against before and then force them to react in the perfect way. And they were just executing on a different level and they did it to the Shock and they do it again to the Houston Outlaws. Like, as, as much as the Shock, we are making mistakes. We watched the Fuel play the Houston Outlaws and we're going to review that game as well. Houston don't make as many mistakes as the Shock, but they also get 3-0'd because the Fuel are just playing on a different level right now. And I think it's hard for people to catch up to that. All right, here we go. Good isolation, good wall by Nero. Isolating Harbin, boom. Bing, bang, boom, just do that. For six more minutes. What? What the fuck? How did it feel it's just pin Violet? Nero May has been really good, yeah. He, even in this match, he's been very good on the May. Oh, Violet's pissed. Even though he dies, like, even if they lose this fight, it doesn't matter. If they just, as long as they lose this fight quickly, and or they just back out and wait for respawners, that's big. Like, Violet has to run back. They're going to have the advantage. Shock can't give too much space. Like, Shock, Shock have to give the space, sorry, is what I'm trying to say. We see Striker actually go to the Doomfist to counter this Symmetra strategy. I actually think that might have been a mistake by Striker, because I think that forced everyone forward, but they don't have the health to play forward. And where, like, look at how far Violet is away. So for that, I think Shock might have to give up more space than they're comfortable giving. It's a good wall by Nero to slow him down. Look at how low they are. They're just having to give so much space because they don't have the health for it. Strike comes from the top rope. Not bad. I want to see a TP from Fuel here. Oh, or just flux the fuck out of everybody. That also works. Damn, that was such a good flux. I actually remember seeing this live. I really don't know. Why does FD God not beat here? Is he not in the flux? He needs to beat. Like, I don't know if he's stuck on the wall. Oh, I was looking at Jack's I That was fucking confusing. I was like, wait, what, what, what just happened? Yeah, why does he not beat here? Someone tell me why you don't beat here. Like, this is such a big flux. You need a beat. Because what happens here is the way it works is, first of all, they have to use Lamp because he doesn't beat. And then, even though he does beat, then he beats eventually. But look at how much health everyone has. So even though he gets the beat down eventually, everyone is still very low. So coming out of this beat, everyone's going to have no health. And it just, I feel like it just, that was so expensive. I think you always want to beat that. The wall was good. Creates a lot of space. Yeah. He trusted the lamp, but you like it's the the fight doesn't end when the lamp goes down, right? Like the, the, as soon as they hit the ground, as you saw the fight, that's just the beginning of the fight. I think they would much prefer to have all the health from the beat because you know the Dallas Fuel are going to engage on the flux anyway, right? So it's not like you're not going to get value out of it. Holding B for Blizzard? B's not a good solution to Blizzard. B is one of the worst defensive ultimates to deal with Blizzard because what happens... If you give them beat and they get stuck in the Blizzard, they're still dead. Right? Like, they'll be frozen for like 9 seconds because me is fun. So, Striker makes it out. Wall is interesting. I don't know if I... It sort of like disrupts everything and then... The May, fr I don't know how Super gets frozen in this, but then it's just like frowny town for everybody. Woo wee! Super gets frozen, and it's just so much damage by Fearless. And this is like, this is the moment everyone's like, what the fuck is happening? Like, they're just getting beaten at every corner. And then Striker goes to like Junkrat. Like, Striker doesn't know what the solution is, right? It's not like they're like, Playing something. Striker's just switching heroes. He's playing mystery heroes. He started on McCree, then goes to Doomfist. Now he's on Junkrat. Like, obviously, point the points are different, but... And if that's not the most tilting thing, like, if you're not tilted a super seeing that, I don't know what is. I don't know what is. That's just... 
Jexa just coming in to close the di close that last little bit of damage. Everything that could go wrong is now going wrong for the shock. Just, yeah, they're just playing the game at a different level right now. And it's like, it, it happens, right? Some teams find their meta, find, some teams find their niche, and Fuel found it right now. As Fuel have found this tempo of playing the game that nobody can keep up with right now. It's like, the Shock's found it multiple times in different things, right? When the Shock played Goats, when they played Bap Goats, uh, last season when they have like a couple of their like crazy oppressive things. Like, Shock are used to doing this to people. Oh, that was a good boot. But I don't think it's happened to Shock very often. Chengdu and Bull? Yeah, but even then, like, it doesn't really, like, Chengdu Bull was, like, very niche, like... They- Chengdu never really chengdu like, a really, really good team, I think. Right? Like, it wasn't like- obviously they won a couple of games here and there, but this is a different level of just, like, playing at a different... There's a tear break between Dallas and the Shock and Houston right now, right? Five, four, three, two, one. Houston high tempo. It's actually interesting you bring up Houston because we, uh, I think the Shock tried to match the tempo of the fuel, and I think they just missed the mark because Shock are used to playing high tempo, right? That's sort of their game. They love to sort of, they sort of, they love to just like out, outpace their opponents and just overrun. That's what makes the Shock so great. I think the Houston had the opposite issue to the fuel. I think the fuel were playing so fast, and Houston's solution was to try and slow it down. Like on Volskaya, like Houston actually plays fuel on Volskaya as well. I think it was. Houston played too slow. They didn't use their ultimates. They were waiting for the perfect window, but fuel were just playing so fast that there was never that opportunity. So like no one's found that middle ground of tempo against Dallas so far. And it'll be interesting to see in this May Melee qualifier like playoffs if someone will find that. Super said the same thing on stream, couldn't find their tempo, yeah, and that, and that's and that's just the thing, like, it, there is always that tempo that's always existing in the game, right? And it's about the team, like, you either play your own game or you have to play to the other people's game. Sometimes you, like, it's easy to say you should always play your own game, but sometimes you can't. If a team is playing faster than you, then you, sometimes you have to match tempo. Or, like, you, so, there's always a... There's always like a perfect moment and teams very rarely find it. But when one team does, it's, you always have to play their game. And people are trying to find their game against Fuel, but no one can. It's not just like the heroes that you play or the, uh, that kind of stuff, right? And I think that's what makes Fearless the MVP in my eyes, is Fearless is the person who is setting this tempo. I don't really like the fa what, what they did Farrah here. I, I assume this is a preset strat. But yeah, they play it. We saw that we saw the Farrah and I I don't know. Farrah just he, as I said, we, we talk so much about tempo and this the Farrah completely changes the way it has to play for the Dallas Fuel. Like it's it's such a slow way of playing. So it just it just felt so weird that they that they did this. Fortunately they switch off it pretty quickly. Like they recognize that hey, this isn't gonna work, and they just hard switch uh to the the double bubble so you do need to give dallas credit for that because there's a lot of people who would have been like hey we almost have beat uh, we, we almost have vac we almost have barrage we should stick with it do you, no i don't think they i don't think they went farad because they didn't have a hit scan in striker can play hit scan i think he played farad because it just like kind of made sense got barrage and still switch barrage is a is a respawn simulator if you, if you ever want to hit Barrage, that's that's the fastest way to reset. Yeah. EMP by Doha hits a bunch of people. Even FD God. How does FD God get hit by this? Feels like FD God doesn't know this is coming. FD God is the most in the open person. Okay, oh, well, maybe they were using the Coalescence to counter it. Violet was hiding from it? Interesting. 
Uh, super dies. Nero EMP, which is pretty good. Not great. Wobble, wobble, so shock at that fight. It was expensive though. What was that? Uh, beat coalescence EMP. I think you take that though if you're if you're the shock. I think that's fine. Yo, Aaron, thank you for six months. Ah, oh, sorry. I know you're a reviewing. I just wanted emotes back. Hey, that's fine. Thank you for six months. So, yeah, it's a preset strategy, as I said. Like, I don't think the reason they played Pharaoh was like, oh, this will really work against Shock now that they're boomed. It was literally just, they probably had already played. They had already played Pharaoh before in this point, and it was already pre-planned that they were going to do it, so. I just feel like when you're that ahead of tempo, and when you're just like, the game's fucking rolling for you, you just keep sticking to whatever works. Um, but, you know, that's not the worst thing in the world. So, Fearless goes. Fearless got a primal. Oh, baby. Here we go. He's going into a dark room. Oh, yeah, and look at that. He gets the mech, and the pulse bomb kills the, uh... Kills the baby diva. And now we're playing Tiny Overwatch. This is Tiny Overwatch right here. Fearless gets murdered on the way in. I think he just expect overexpected how much damage that we're gonna have. Uh, Super's Primal wasn't very good. I think he was really hoping for something big. Oh, Justin get Fielder. I feel like he might have been better committing to the Ana, but yeah, now he gets EMP'd in the open. That's a problem. If he got that Brig, it would have been really good. But yeah, Lucio Moya just isn't as good in this room as compared to like a Brig, right? Brig is just like thrives in those situations. Chambers, thank you for the 22 months. Loving the VOD reviews. Great content. Thank you very much. Why is Super a monkey? Because they, I think they wanted to... They didn't want to play against the Pharaoh. They didn't want to play the Brawl. So they go to the monkey comp to to play their tempo. And they got them first point. And you, I think that's good. And I think at this point, you got to stick with it. I don't... I, I would love to see them use the beat, the Moira ult, the EMP, and then switch to like Anna Brig. Right? Like, it feels like they're playing Rush right now, but Rush isn't going to work against Fuel. Like... Jexay has a rally. If you're the shock, how do you win unless you hit an enormous EMP? Um, so. It is interesting that they chose this map, though. I feel like this is one of the few maps that would have been... Like, what other maps are in this pool, actually, now that you mention it? Yeah, like, why did... Did they not want to play a brawl map against the way that Dallas feel are playing? King's Row, Blizzard World. I can see them avoiding K Blizzard World. No, uh, I think it would probably be King's Row. Yeah, I feel like scared of Sim on King's Row. I don't think Sim's that good on King's Row. If anything, I think like May McCree is way better because the McCree can get good high grounds and shit like that. And the May is hyper effective. No, 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 that is, that's an interesting point of, like, why are they playing this map? And, like, that's just not a good enough EMP, right? Like, that, it's just, they need bigger openings than this. Like, I don't know where all the fuel went. I think Nero thought there were more people here. I think he thought they were still here. But that's a solo EMP on a Fearless. It's gonna get Fearless killed. It's gonna get Fearless killed. It's gonna... And then they coalescence and beat at the same time. If this isn't Boom Shock, I don't know what is. Look at this. Solo EMP. But Striker and Choi can't follow up. Uh, Choi can follow up. They don't get Fearless due to great peel by Dallas. And then they... I don't even know why FD got his beating. I don't know why FD got his beating. Violet's Coalescence is good, but I don't know why FD got his beating. But then they overlap them, which is the worst thing that you can do out of all of that. Alright, Fearless is nanoed. Alright, Shock is doing alright in this fight. They're all stuck in a room now, though. Except for FD God, who's hacked outside the room. Oh, Fearless be fucking, actually. Let me look at this. He gets his primal? 
Oh boy. Oh no. Oh god. Ah, oh, sweet Jesus. Lads, we overlaid our support ultimates. Hooey. And that's like. And I think if you're the shock, they are smart enough to recognize this in game that they just fucked it up. Like, I think after a play like that, you're just like, well, we had a good run. Like, they, they look at how screwed they are. They don't have a nano. They don't, like, they have to switch. So, like, it goes back. I wonder, hear, hear me out. I wonder if the reason that they beated and call it, like, FD God felt like he needed to use the beat was because, like, they wanted to switch anyway. They wanted to get onto the Anna Brig, maybe. But then it just, like, it ended up causing them to overlap. But now they have to walk into an EMP. Oh, this was actually sick. That was a really good catch. That was a very good catch by FD God. Oh, but he's dead. That might have been a little aggressive after he got that really good catch. Uh, but it was still a good catch. It feels like Felix just has more health than everyone else. Is Felix, Felix is seriously not gonna die? Felix is not gonna die, is he? I just, I don't believe it. I don't think you needed that rally, Jex, eh? I really don't think that rally was necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Just flexing on him. Yeah, that was also a bad rally. Hasn't been many great ults as of late. <laughs> I think he thought they were going to commit. Yeah, but there was already one down. Like, I don't know why he had to commit while the diva bomb was coming out. You know? Eh. I think he just misjudged the situation. No, no, Fearless. Oh, boy. And then Violet dies, right? Like, they just can't keep their supports alive. Like, Fearless didn't even help that. But, like, Fearless goes for the back. Violet's trying to play aggressive. And then they just pivot. They just kill Violet. He gets hacked and he just dies. That was a good stick by Striker. Oh, I actually remember seeing this. Look at this. This is Striker trying his goddamn darndest to win this game. Oh! Choice solo's kill, yeah. How much work he's doing. Oh, FD God, I would not have done that. Would not have done that. No matter how much armor you have, if you're standing near a ledge. I don't know how I feel about the nano onto the Winston. Oh, never mind. Somehow, FD. Oh, no! I actually. 
they woke him up anyway, I think. But... Super gets bashed and then hacked and then pushed away. Oh, no. And that's it. And that's it. And that, and that's sort of why we said that that was a car crash. I don't think we'll ever, that, that is the first time we've seen Shock get dominated in such a long time. And it wasn't even like they lost, like we've seen the Shock lose over the last few seasons, right? That was a lot of mistakes out of the Shock. Just a lot. In like, everybody made a bunch of mistakes in certain situations and it was just, it just wasn't pretty. And hopefully the shot can take a, take a lot away from this in terms of just being like, hey, that was, a, that was a failure. Where did it all go wrong? I personally would like to see them stop moving their roster around as much uh, into other roles. Uh, but I trust Krusty. I trust them to bounce back from this. There's no reason to start like assuming the shock is like going to be like not good team. I think a lot of credit needs to go to the Dallas Fuel. I think Dallas Fuel are uh, kind of bowler right now. I think they, they are proving why they are considered probably the favorites to win the May Melee. They're just so oppressive, so aggressive. Fearless, fielder, fucking Doha Sparkle. They're just, they're just everywhere at all times and you just can't deal with it. And they have these unique strategies when they want to play Brawl, when they want to play the Dive. So, yeah, I think... We can safely say the circle of misery is done with the Dallas Fuel. Uh, we hope. We've never been here before as Dallas Fuel. Never been here before. So, someone just made a point in chat as well. And I talked about this earlier in the review. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reiterate this because it's so important. Do not blame the new players for why the failings of the Shock are happening. That was everybody. That was on everybody. That was on coaching. That was on all the players. They fucked up. They'll come back from it. Don't blame one person. Don't be that guy. You don't need to point at one person. Point at the team. Thank you very much for watching. Love you all. Have a good night. And I'll see you.